Wildlife, Crystal and Kaya the Koala. Kids are our future. Take action now. Wildlife, Crystal and Kaya the Koala. Learn about animals to make a better world. Learn about animals to make a better world. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wildlife Crystal. I'm your host, Wildlife Crystal, a wildlife specialist. As you know, on this show, Wildlife Crystal, we are going to be learning fun facts about one animal and their environment every episode. I'm here with my very special co-host, the extra special, Kaya the Koala. How's everyone doing? I'm feeling extra excited today. I just want to jump around. I love your enthusiasm. You've got me excited too. So how about we jump right into our animal of the day? I'm all for it. Let's hear the great animal fun facts you have for us today. Coming right up. But first, let me tell you a few things about our animal of the day so that all of our friends here can guess with you. The animal of the day is greenish in color and has six legs. This animal can sit still for hours waiting to kill her prey. And this animal is pretty powerful, even though she is not big in size. Wow, those are cool clues. Let me think. Okay, go ahead and think about it. I'll give you five seconds. I think I've got it. Come on, everybody. Let's all guess together. The animal of the day is the praying mantis. Wow, I'm so impressed. Way to go, everyone. You are all correct. The animal of the day is the praying mantis. The praying mantis is an insect that's been around for millions of years. Did you say millions of years? Yes, I did. The modern day praying mantis is a descendant or a relative of the same insect that lived millions of years ago. There are more than 2,400 species of this calm insect and they can be found almost anywhere around the world, in tropical areas and sunny areas that have temperate or warm weather. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that the praying mantis has been around for so long. This probably means that the praying mantis does not face any threats and that that has helped the calm insect live with no problems. I wish I could tell you that you were correct, Kaya. But unfortunately, the praying mantis does have threats. In fact, the biggest threat that the praying mantis faces is loss of habitat. Deforestation for building new places and homes for people and deforestation to provide more land for cows to be farmed is damaging the population of the praying mantis. They are losing their homes. Why don't people understand how bad it is to cut down trees? They need trees for their homes. You are correct. And remember, deforestation is not only cutting down of trees. Too often people forget that all the plant and animal life that grow around those trees are also being destroyed. So many animals are being left homeless because of deforestation. You are right. There are many plants and bushes and flowers that grow in forests and jungles. Exactly. The praying mantis and other animals need these to live and thrive. Deforestation is not only devastating to the habitat of the praying mantis, but it is also devastating the food supply that this quiet insect needs. That makes so much sense to me. How can the praying mantis find food when everything around is destroyed? All of this information is very interesting, but tell us how we can help the praying mantis. We wildlife specialists must come together to do our part. What can we do? Let's all begin by understanding the importance of insects and the importance of a balance in nature. A, a praying mantis is one of the best insects to have in your garden and on your farm. They are a natural insect propellant. We don't need to spray pesticides. You see, the praying mantis is a carnivore and needs to eat other insects to survive. When a praying mantis eats other insects, then this helps to control the population of other insects around. That is great advice. We will definitely get the word out. Let's also help the praying mantis keep its natural habitat by asking for stricter laws against deforestation. It's a sad fact 
that much of the deforestation today is to clear land to farm cows that will then be sent to the slaughterhouse and then to the supermarkets. What do you mean? I mean that too much land is being cleared for cows just so we can eat more meat. This is totally unnecessary. I got a group of my friends and my family to promise not to eat meat on one day of the week. In fact, we can all call it Meatless Mondays. We are reducing the amount that we eat which will reduce deforestation. This will help the praying mantis and lots of other animals to keep their habitat and thrive. I'm in. What a great idea. We must all do our part to help. Do you know why the praying mantis wins every battle? Because he prays first. I knew you couldn't wait much longer without giving us one of your clever jokes. I hope I didn't bug you. You never bug me. I love all of your jokes. Our show is all about having fun while we learn fun facts. This show wouldn't be the same without you. And it wouldn't be the same without all of our wonderful wildlife specialists. Thanks a bunch. Our wildlife specialists are just like us. They're all here because they love all animals and they want to protect all animals. I agree. Did you know that the praying mantis gets her name because this insect has two upper arms that are held in the praying position at the top of her long body? Really, these two arms are two of the six legs that the praying mantis has. Another super interesting fact is the fact that the praying mantis has a triangular head that she can turn 180 degrees. 180 what? 180 degrees. This means that the praying mantis can turn her head completely around without moving her body at all. That is so cool. Tell us more. The praying mantis has two wings and six legs, as I mentioned before. Yes, I wanted to ask you why you called them arms. You see, the front two legs have evolved or changed over time into two folded arms. These arms have prickly, thorn-like parts that help the praying mantis to hold their prey once the prey is caught. Interesting, too, is the fact that the praying mantis has five eyes. The two large eyes that are very noticeable are used to identify movement around. The three small eyes in the middle of the head are used to detect light. Amazing! Now I understand why they say the praying mantis are such good predators. I'm sure it's because of their great eyesight. Way to be a great wildlife specialist. Yes, the praying mantis is a very effective and smart predator. The praying mantis sits and waits patiently to attack a prey for hours. When the prey is at the right distance, the praying mantis quickly grabs the prey with her two spiky arms and immediately begins to eat. What does the praying mantis do if the prey tries to get away? Will the praying mantis fly after the prey? Actually, only the male praying mantis flies, and he doesn't even fly that often or that far. The female is too heavy and cannot fly at all. Does the praying mantis have any predators? Yes, the praying mantis habitat is an area where there are lots of flowering plants and insect-eating animals. The praying mantis finds herself preyed on by snakes, birds, frogs, and even small mammals. The praying mantis often uses her two wings for protection. Her wings have eye spots on each of them. This looks like an eye. If attacked, the praying mantis opens her wings and tries to startle the predator, as if there were two big eyes that are staring. How does the praying mantis protect her young? A female praying mantis is as fierce as any mama when it comes to her young. In late summer, early fall, the female mates with the male before laying her eggs. The female praying mantis creates a special capsule like a container to place her eggs in and keep them moist and safe all winter. Do you mean a cocoon like a caterpillar makes? That is a great wildlife specialist question. The praying mantis capsule is made out of foam or a lather of liquid, which the female makes from her body. It happens and then she lays her eggs in it. A female praying mantis can lay 100 to 600 eggs. Then the female places the capsule full of eggs in a warm, sunny place until they hatch in spring. What do we call a baby praying mantis? They are called nymphs. When they hatch, they look like small maggots or worms. Then they start to molt or shed. Did you say shed? 
Do you mean they shed like dogs and cats? I didn't know they had hair. Actually, they shed more like a snake sheds its skin. Praying mantises will molt or shed six or more times until they reach adulthood. An adult praying mantis weighs 0.14 to 0.18 ounces, which is about the weight of seven paper clips. The female adult will be 2.75 to 5 inches long. That is like three to five paper clips long. At about six months, they are adult size, and the females are a bit larger than the males. The praying mantis can live nine months to a year. I have never been so excited about going out to find insects as I am right now. You have given us so much to learn today. Being a wildlife specialist is like being a soldier for mother nature. That is a great way to look at it. Let's never forget how important it is to take care of all animals. They were here before us, and when we arrived, they all shared their habitat with us. We have a responsibility to take care of our animals and our planet. Remember, it's up to us, the future generation, to make sure they have a place to live. Let's always work together to make sure animals and humans live in harmony. Let's always be kind and respectful to every creature on this planet. And now it's question time. Kaya, are you as excited as I am to put the knowledge we just learned today to the test? I'm ready, spaghetti. True or false? The praying mantis is a herbivore. The correct answer is false. They are carnivores. The praying mantis gets his name because he has A, six legs, B, two wings, C, two arms, or D, two front legs that are folded like arms. The correct answer is D, two front legs that are folded like arms. Where does the female praying mantis lay her eggs? Is it A, at the vets? B, in a foamy-like capsule? C, in a tree hollow? Or D, in a very dry place? The correct answer is B, in a foamy-like capsule. You guys did great. Kaya and I have to go, but we will be learning fun facts about another animal next week. See you next time on Wildlife Crystal. Bye, bye everyone. Awesome to see you today. You look great.